This is pre-calculus notes on section 6.3. And the title of today's notes is right here above the title of today's notes is the title of the section. So section 6.3's title is Angles and Radian Measure. And the title of this note is Extending Angle Measure. Okay, so the first thing we're doing in this section is we are going to kind of just give a definition of, of standard, um, an angle and standard position, and start to talk to you about, um, about angles that might have measurements that are um, of different values than you've ever considered an angle could be before, okay? So I want you to get these um, this description in your notes, okay? Right here, right? So standard position, oops, okay, has an initial ray on the positive x-axis. Um, the positive angle measures rotate counterclockwise, and negative angle measures rotate clockwise. All right, so underneath here, I've got an example of an angle that's in standard position, okay? And standard position means that the initial ray, okay, has um, the vertex at the origin, right, and is going on the positive x-axis, right? Now, the way this is defined um, we start out with two rays. The concept is that we start out with two rays where both pink and blue, I just drew two different, I'm going to show you what I did. I just drew two different um, rays, okay, or highlighted two different rays. One of them being blue, the other one being pink, okay. So we start out with both of those two rays on the positive x-axis. And what happens is that the initial ray stays where it is, okay, but the terminal ray is going to rotate. Now, my um, tools here, eh, undo that, my tools here, don't allow me to rotate this while keeping that vertex of the ray on the origin. But that's the type of rotation we're talking about. So the terminal ray is going to rotate from the initial ray. And it's going to stop wherever the angle stops. Okay. So this right here. Okay, it's in there, I'm just hot making it red now, it is going to show you the direction of the rotation. All right, so um, this angle is rotating counterclockwise. Counter, counterclockwise. That should have been all one word, okay? This angle is rotating counterclockwise, and so therefore the angle has a positive measure. Okay, we call this a quadrant one angle. Okay, because the terminal ray um, is in quadrant one. All right, so right now what I want to do is I just want to show you my nifty protractor tool right here. Okay, and let's think about what the measure of this angle is. All right. Oops. Wow. I didn't know that that tool did that. Okay. All right. So I'm going to pause my video for a second because I'm having a hard time with my tool. All right. I'm back now. So what I just did, oops, I didn't do it very well, is I, oh, I'm still having trouble. I am moving my protractor so that the um, origin is at the center of the angle, okay? What that means is that zero on the protractor 
should be on the initial ray, okay? And that 90 degrees should be on the y-axis, all right? There we go, okay. Now, this green dot here, I'm going to rotate this until it is overlapping the terminal ray, all right? And one of the reasons that I'm measuring this angle for you is just to show, again, illustrate um, what we're talking about when we're talking about rotation of an angle. All right. I put that um, terminal ray on the protractor on top of the pink terminal ray of my angle, and then this will spit out an identical angle. Okay. Let me move my protractor out of the way. This. This will spit out an identical angle, and this says it's 56 degrees. Okay, so I've got a quadrant one angle that has a measure of positive 56 degrees. Okay, now this one might be different than what you've seen before. This is a quadrant three angle. Why is it quadrant three? It's quadrant three because the terminal ray over here is in quadrant three. Again, the initial ray is always on the positive x-axis. And here what we're doing is we're showing a rotation that's going in the clockwise direction. So that means that this angle has a negative measurement. Okay? All right. That's a negative angle. I'm going to see if I can get my protractor to measure this one, okay, trying to put zero on the terminal ray, on the initial ray, and on the y-axis I'm putting my 90, okay, so I'm moving my initial ray there, and there you go, moving both rays over to the initial ray, okay? And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate to the terminal ray, line that up, I'm going to get another angle. Now, this protractor is really only capable of measuring the angles that are um, rotating um, clockwise, all right? So what did it just give me? It gave me, this is neat because we're going to talk about this in a minute. It gave me a 227 degree angle, which is something that you may never have heard of before. It's, it's upside down, but there it is, okay? So if I want to know the measure of this angle right here, all right, well, the full, hundred, the full circle is 360, all right? This green part here, is 227, so therefore, okay, I've got three, oh my god, I just messed it up, all right, try again, 360 minus 227, I carried too many places here, all right, I've got three, three, I've got a 133 degree angle. Now, since this is going in the clockwise direction, we call that negative 133 degree, negative 133 degrees, okay? All right, so there we've got a quadrant three negative angle. Here, I've got an angle that is greater 
than 360 degrees. Notice that um, I've got one full rotation. That means a full circle and then some. All right. So to get the measure of this angle, I'm going to measure that acute angle between um, the positive x-axis and the terminal ray. Get that word out of the way. Okay. So that angle is 35 degrees. So in this case, what I have is a full rotation, right? And it's going in the counterclockwise du direction, so it's positive. And then plus 35 degrees more. So that's 395 degrees. All right, sketch the angles. All right, and you're going to do this without a protractor. I'm not really interested in the exact measure of the angle. But what is important is that the terminal ray is in the correct quadrant. And um, also, the direction of rotation is also important. Okay, so here we go. Here's my, here's a rough sketch of 40 degrees, all right? So I've got initial ray, and then 40 degrees has to have a terminal angle that's in quadrant one, all right? Matter of fact, I probably drew that a little too big. That looks like more than 40, but it doesn't matter, okay? You're not looking for that type of precision. I just want to know that you're showing the correct angle of rotation and that the terminal ray is ending in the correct quadrant, okay? All right, 830 degrees, okay? So 830, right? is greater than 360. Let me get out a calculator here. All right. So 830 minus 360 is 470, which is still bigger than 360. So here was one rotation. Okay. But 470 is still bigger than 360. Okay, so here's the second rotation. Gives me 110. Okay, this is in the positive direction. So here is going to be my xy axis, okay, here's my initial ray, and I am making two full rotations, counterclockwise, one, two, and then 110 degrees more. Well, 110 is more than 90, all right, so it's going to end up in quadrant two, okay. It doesn't go past 180. It's going to end up in quadrant two. All right, negative 43 degrees. Okay, initial ray. Terminal ray. Okay, since this is negative, it is rotating clockwise. And since this is um, less, 43 is less than 90, it doesn't go past the y-axis. All right, negative 312, all right, is moving in the negative direction, all right. It is going to go past 90, past 180, past 270, and then into quadrant one. It doesn't go past the initial ray because it's not greater than 360. So here somewhere in quadrant one is the terminal ray. 
Okay, and finally, I know this is a long video. Finally, um, coterminal angles, okay? Coterminal angles are angles that are formed by different rotations that have the same initial and terminal rays. All right, so find three angles that are terminal with 30 degrees. Okay, I'm just going to, first of all, draw a rough sketch of 30 degrees. Okay, so now another angle that would have the same initial and terminal ray. Okay, first there is my initial ray. And now if I were to now rotate a full circle and then 30 degrees more, that is coterminal with 30. So what is that measure? That would be 360 plus 30. Okay degrees. So that's 390. All right. Now it's saying that I want three angles. Okay. So that's only one of them. Well, here's another. Okay. Same initial ray. Okay. But this time I am going to rotate. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I did that right. I'm sorry. Same initial ray, but now I am going to rotate clockwise. Okay, so that's going to be a negative angle since it's going clockwise. So how much is that blue? Well, that's going to be a negative something, right? That is going to be 30 degrees. Oops, 30 degrees. Subtract 360. That's negative 330. All right, I need one more. Let's go purple. All right, so how about if I were to rotate twice once, twice, and then 30 degrees more? So that would be 360 plus 360 plus 30, which would be 750, I think. Okay. So, now, here are some general rules. Okay. Anytime we're trying to find coterminal angles, we're going to add or subtract multiples of 360. And this, down at the bottom, I want all of this in your notes. This is an arithmetic sequence that describes that. So you start with the angle theta, and you're either adding or subtracting n, which is an integer, times 360 degrees. Okay, so um, n would be the index or the number of terms in that sequence. All right, find three angles, coterminal with 60. This video is incredibly long right now. Let me rush through this. Okay, so I'm going to take 60 plus 360. That one gives me 420. There's one. 60 minus 360 gives me negative 300. And then 60 plus 2 times 360. I think that's 780. All right, that's it.